By now, everyone seems to understand this simple point. If you've got an LS, you stick a cam in it and a turbo and you're on your way. What they don't understand is the intake manifold. Does the intake manifold work the same NA and under boost? In this video, I'm gonna show you that intake manifolds work the same NA and under boost by performing a test between a fast LSXRT intake and a Holly high ram. Now people might see Holly and they might see fast. What I see is long runner and short runner. And if you've got a long runner manifold, it does one thing. You got a short runner manifold, it does something else. I don't care whose name's on it. And guess what? It does the same thing, NA and under boost. Testing these two intakes was actually pretty easy. You see, it came when I was running the Big Bang Gen 3 twin turbo test. If you haven't seen that video, check it out. It's right here. But while I was running that test, that twin turbo six liter combination already had the Holly High Ram. All I had to do was add the fast and run it at the same boost. Now we ran both combinations NA as well. That way we can compare the NA differences versus the turbo differences to see if there are any, you know, differences. I ran this test on our six liter Big Bang motor. Now this was originally a Gen 3 2000, 1999 or 2000 LQ4 motor that came from my buddy Chad Reynolds. Came out of his Suburban, had like 250,000 miles on it. So we added a ring gap to it. We put a set of uh, total engine airflow ported 317 heads on it, a Brian Tui stage three turbo cam, and then we ran both of the manifolds. Now our turbo system was, you know, the typical tubular, these came from DNA, tubular turbo headers, feeding a pair of S475 Borg Warner turbos. And we also had our CX Racing dual inlet, single outlet, dual core air to water intercooler, and that worked really well. And we ran dyno water through for this testing, and that worked out just fine, because we weren't running a ton of boost, and we weren't running a ton of timing. So everything worked out great. Now both combinations were run with the same air fuel, which was about 11.8, and the same total timing. We just wanted to keep things fair and just compare just the, the effect of the change in runner length basically and kind of intake design between our two intake manifolds. So we ran them both NA and both turbocharged. So let's hear those babies run. We'll check out the NA results, then check out what happened after we added some boost. Here is our test motor. It was a 1999 or 2006 liter LQ4. Now the only changes we made to it, uh, we went over this a little bit before, but I wanted to mention the fact that this LQ4 now had 317 heads on it and they were ported by total engine airflow. Whereas previously this, uh, this motor, because it was an early one, would have come with iron heads and we didn't really want to run those. So it had, basically this was a heads, cam and intake LQ4. Now the compression was down maybe one or two tenths of a point because when Total Engine Airflow does these 317 heads, they actually do chamber work on them also. So they brought the compression down, like I said, one or two tenths of a point. It had the Brian Tui turbo cam in it. And as we know, since this is an NA motor and we ran an NA right now and it has a turbo cam in it, that can't work, right? <laughs> it does work, it works just fine. And it had the fast intake on it, which is always good, especially in this RPM range. So equipped with that stuff, our six liter produced 524 horsepower and 479 foot-pounds of torque. So it did pretty good. Carried the power out. We ran, ran this thing out to 6,600 RPM. And here's what happened after we put the high ram on it. Now remember, the fast is a long runner manifold, relatively speaking, and we use these terms long and short. Um, it's probably better actually to measure them and give you exact dimensions, but I didn't do that. So here's the Holly high ram. And as you can see, the Holly high ram made 
529 horsepower. So more horsepower. So it was up, you know, <laughs> it was up five horsepower. But, and if you told people that, hey, look, this thing made five more horsepower, they think, oh, that's great. But if you look at the rest of the curve from 6,400 RPM on down, the short runner manifold, whatever it is, in this case, it's a Holly, but it could be anything, makes less power than the long runner version does. And, and not by a little bit, by, by a substantial amount in some of these areas. If you take a look at 47 or 4800 RPM, we got 442 versus 477. So what's that, like 35 foot-pounds of torque? You're definitely gonna feel that. And since it's down all the way, as you're accelerating this vehicle and going through this RPM range, now, if you just wanted to run top speed <laughs> and you needed that extra five horsepower and that all you cared about was right up there, that's fine. But if you're accelerating these vehicles or driving around, there's just no comparison between having the right runner length and having runner length that's basically too short. So this is a comparison between the two run naturally aspirated on our six liter. But now here's the big question. What happens to these when we run them under boost? And this is some of my favorite testing. I love this NA and turbo stuff on intake manifolds. I've been doing this since back in the 80s, basically, through all the five liter Ford stuff and the tune port Chevy stuff, and all the way through, and always it's the same thing. People think that they are turbo specific like intake manifolds, but let's take a look. Here is our combination now after we ran the twin turbos. We put the twin S475s, which are obviously oversized for a test like this, especially at only 10, the 10 pound range that we were running these at. But we had had those on there so we could run the big bang stuff and turn them all the way up. And, and if you're looking to make 1500 horsepower or something, it's always better to have 2000 horsepower with the turbo to get things going. So here is our combination, our six liter with the fast intake. And the first thing I wanna point out is that this thing made a peak of 929 horsepower at about 10 pounds, 10.2 or three pounds. That's a lot of power for 10 pounds. And the reason that it does that is because we made so much power NA. So we had, you know, over 500 horsepower NA and it's always helpful. It helps you keep the boost down for any given power level. So that's why I was like to make a good NA motor, then add boost, then you look like a hero. And that's exactly what happened here. So we, hit, we made 929 horsepower and 796 foot-pounds of torque. So a nice torque curve there. Now let's take a look and see what happened after we added the, uh, swapped over from the fast LSXRT intake over to the Holly. So here is our Holly run at roughly the same boost level. It was in the low to mid tens. Um, I think we saw a peak of 10.8 on the Holly actually. That's the closest we could get them with what we were using to control the boost. But you can see, just as we saw with the NA combination, the short runner manifold makes less power and torque through most of the curve, it's certainly all the way out to 6,500 RPM. And that's the same thing that we saw on the NA combination. I do want to point out though that, and this obviously shows that the combination is RPM specific, the longer runner fast stuff wants to make power in this range and it has nothing to do with flow and that's one of the problems people have understanding intake manifolds. They think, oh, this thing flows more. The fast doesn't flow more air than the Holly does. As a matter of fact, if you put them on a flow bench, the Holly probably outflows the fast by quite a bit. And airflow wouldn't make any difference at 4,000 RPM anyway. Where, where you'll see an airflow difference is at high RPM where more airflow is needed. 
all of this stuff that's happening down low is all from reflected waves. It's basically the design of the intake, the runner length, supercharges pressure into the um, into the cylinders to improve like cylinder filling in these RPM ranges. So all of that is runner length specific. It's not it's not technically airflow. Airflow happens out at the very top. And the other thing I want to point out is on the Holly, this doesn't mean that the fast is a better manifold than the Holly. It's not. If you want to run in the 6500 RPM range, that's a good choice. That fast works really well. If you're drag racing and you run out past that, let's say you run from 6500 to 8000 or 8500, then the fast isn't going to work. It's it's too it's not tuned for that RPM range. That's why guys are running these high rams on these turbocharger LS swap Fox Mustangs and basically everything else. If you're running them at 8,000 RPM, that's where this manifold is going to shine. And it's going to shine NA or uh, under boost. So, as this shows, it doesn't make any difference. NA under boost, these reflected waves, the, the charge filling, the power gains that you get are basically consistent. RPM is the important thing when you're choosing a manifold. Short runners, high RPM. Long runners, lower RPM. Pick the manifold for RPM, then add the boost. Everybody will be happy. Okay, guys, were you surprised at all? I mean, long runners make peak power down low. Short runners make it up top. Intake manifolds are basically RPM dependent. Stop thinking about them as a turbo manifold or an NA manifold. There's no such thing. Everything loves boost, right? We know cams do. But the reality is that intake manifolds are, are optimized for specific RPM ranges. Longer runners, down low, shorter runners, up top. And that same thing carries over even under boost. So this test really, no surprise. And it goes right along with the other test that I did, that video is up right here, comparing one of the fabricated sheet metal, sheet metal manifolds versus the a long runner manifold. Same thing, we ran NA and under boost, did the same thing, and it will continue to do this because basically, it's just the laws of physics. Thanks for watching, guys. I'm Richard Holdner. Thanks for supporting the channel. Make sure to like, share, subscribe, ring the bell. I'll keep bringing the videos.